Regular meeting number four will now come to order. Please stand for the playing of the national anthem. We now welcome uh, Dr. John Little from Resurrection Missionary Baptist Church to lead us in prayer. Let us pray. Eternal God, our Father, we thank you for this glorious and wonderful day you have given unto us. We thank you for the privilege that we are able to come and assemble here tonight. And we pray for these civil servants who have committed themselves uh, to uh, look out for the best for the residents of the city of Columbus. We pray that you would touch each of them uh, and give them wisdom that they need to legislate and to make decisions that will affect even the least of these. We pray that, that you would continue to guide their thoughts and guide their decisions. We pray for this council as a whole. We pray that you would continue to keep them, continue to guide them, we pray for this new president, that you would give him wisdom to lead this group of men and women as they legislate over our city. We thank you for this great city of Columbus. We ask your divine blessing to continuously be upon it, continue to let us uh, work together with civil servants and community that we too can make this a better place for all the residents of the city of Columbus. We thank you for this day. It is in your name that we do pray, amen. Amen, thank you, Dr. Little. Clerk, call the roll. Brown, Brown, Harden, Page, Stinziano, Tyson, President Klein. Can I get a motion to dispense with the reading of the journal? Second. Clerk, call the roll. Brown, Brown, Harden, Page, Stinziano, Tyson, President Klein. This week's communications received by the city clerk's office are listed on the agenda and we published in the city bulletin. Are there any other communications to be read into the record? Not at this time. Uh, and ask, ask you, clerk, to read the new committee assignments into the record. Finance Committee, Council Member Priscilla R. Tyson, Chairperson, Committee Members Hardin, Ms. Brown, and President Klein. Health and Human Services Committee, Council Member Priscilla R. Tyson, Chairperson, Committee Members Ms. Brown, Page, and President Klein. Workforce Development Committee, Council Member Priscilla Tyson, Chairperson, Committee Members Ms. Brown, Hardin, President Klein. Economic Development Committee, uh, Elizabeth Brown, Chairperson, Committee Members Stinziano, Tyson, President Klein. Environment Committee, Council Member Elizabeth Brown, Chairperson, Committee Members Hardin, Tyson, President Klein. Education Committee, Council Member Elizabeth Brown, Chairperson, Committee Members Page, Tyson, President Klein. Administration Committee, Council Member Elizabeth Brown, Chairperson, Committee Members Hardin, Page, and President Klein. Public Safety Committee, Council Member Mitchell J. Brown, Chairperson, Committee Members Page, Stinziano, and President Klein. Veterans Affairs Committee, Council Member Mitchell J. Brown, Chairperson, Committee Members Stinziano, Tyson, President Klein. Public Service and Transportation Committee, Council Member Shannon Hardin, Chairperson, Committee Members Stinziano, Tyson, President Klein. Small and Minority Business Development Committee, Council Member Shannon G. Hardin, Chairperson, Committee Members Ms. Brown, Tyson, President Klein. Recreation and Parks Committee, Council Member Jiza Page, 
Change Chairperson, Committee Members Tyson, Mr. Brown, and President Klein. Housing Committee, Council Member Jiza Page, Chairperson, Committee Members Ms. Brown, Stinziano, and President Klein. Zoning Committee, Council Member Jiza Page, Chairperson, all members serve on that committee. Technology Committee, Council Member Michael Stinziano, Chairperson, Committee Members Harden, Ms. Brown, President Klein. Public Utilities Committee, Council Member Michael Stinziano, Chairperson, Committee Members Harden, Ms. Brown, President Klein. Judiciary and Court Administration Committee, Council Member Michael Stinziano, Chairperson, Committee Members Page, Mr. Brown, President Klein. Rules and Reference Committee, Council President Zach Klein, Chairperson, Committee Members Harden, Page, and Mr. Stenziano. Thank you, Clerk Blevins. Are there any resolutions by any members of council? Council Member Elizabeth Brown. Yes. Um, thank you, President Klein. Tonight I do have a resolution. Um, I'd like to remove from consent resolution 18X-2016 on page 8. With your permission, I'd like to introduce it now. Wonderful, thank you. Um, I would like to uh, introduce resolution 18X-2016 to honor, recognize, and celebrate the life and achievement of Mr. Donald Hutzler after a lifetime of public service to the Columbus and surrounding communities. Whereas Mr. Hutzler was a U.S. Army veteran who started his educational career at Sinclair Junior College and furthered his education at uh, Ohio University and The Ohio State University. And whereas Mr. Hutzler served the Ohio Historical Society as a curator of history as well as working on collection and site development. Whereas through research and diligence, Mr. Hutzler played an integral, integral part in restoring the Hannah Noble Log House located at 5030 Westerville Road of Columbus, which has been listed on the National Registrar of Historic Places. Whereas Mr. Hutzler spent many hours researching and analyzing several historical landmarks, including the Franklinton Log Post Office, also known as the David Deerdorf 1807 House, located at 72 Gift Street. His investigation was continuous as layers of material were peeled back and interesting features were found, researched, and discussed, eventually leading to the restoration of this historic Columbus landmark. And whereas, as a result of Mr. Hutzler's knowledge and expertise, Columbus is home to many important landmarks that will serve to educate citizens now and in the future. Now, therefore, be it resolved by the Council of the City of Columbus to honor, recognize, and celebrate the life and achievement of Mr. Donald Hutzler after a lifetime of public service to the Columbus community and being another great reason why Columbus is the best place to live, work, and raise a family. Uh, I, if there are no questions, I move for adoption of the resolution. Brown, Brown, Harden, Page, Stenziano, Tyson, President Klein. Thank you. Uh, Mrs. Hutzler and Mr. Walt Reiner are here to accept the resolution. Would you like to make comments at the podium? It's a pleasure to be here and say a little bit about uh, Don Hutzler. I see we have some uh, new blood here at the council. That's great. A lot of new energy. I think it was Will Winston uh, Churchill said something about uh, something to the effect that if a society doesn't understand and remember their history, they're prone to make the same mistakes that they had in the past. So it's uh, something that's very good to remember. Uh, Don Hutzler was a very unique, humble man. Uh, my wife and I were at a quandary when we discovered a log house buried inside another house on Westerville Road. And so we had no idea what to do. It was scheduled for demolition. So we called the Historical Society and we found Don Hutzler who had an encyclopedic knowledge of things in the past, hundreds of years old, and he was able to uh, help us. And uh, one example is that uh, Don, uh, when he looked at the Franklinton log, log post office, it was kind of a hodgepodge of construction. The man had over 12 children, so he was in a hurry to build this. Somehow it through a fluke is still here, and it is a very important building also on the historical register, but there was a, a case of like, well, would it even be possible to have a sighted over log house back in the early 1800s, over 200 years ago? 
and today somebody plugs in Wikipedia, well then we just dialed up Don and we'd say, Don, what about this? Because we want to restore this the proper way because it's going to be here for another two, three hundred years the way we're doing it. And he would say, well, there was a sawmill along the Scioto at this time in 1805 and there was one down here down the stream and it's quite possible that they would have sawed up wood and had a sighted over log house because it wasn't uncommon. We had a bet going on at one time with the city historic preservation officer, the architect and I, because this house looked like it had evolved in different sections. And Don made the bet, he says, now it was all put together at one time. Then through the science of dendrochronology, <coughs> we did find out that all the logs were cut in 1807, except for some that were cut in 1798, which is the first civilization that was ever here, so somebody had moved in logs that were even older than the building. So um, Don was quite a guy, and uh, he was a genius in his field, and uh, it's very important that people think that uh, if you're in some kind of a field that doesn't get a lot of attention, that if you do the best you can and work at it, uh, you'll someday be appreciated, and I think we have a lot of people here that knew Don and his work, and if they could stand up He has quite a crowd here in appreciation of his service. Thank and you. And so um, that uh, I don't want to spend too much time, but uh, basically uh, Don was a genius. He was a very charitable man. He spent a lot of time helping others. And for his efforts, we still do have at least two buildings that I know of that are early log structures that uh, can serve to be uh, tourist attractions and visible signs of our fine past here in Columbus, Ohio. Thank you so much. Mrs. Hutzler, do you have anything you want to add? Okay, do my colleagues have anything they want to add? Well, I want to, um, I want to also thank former council member, the uh, indomitable uh, Fran Ryan for uh, being so instrumental in, in getting this honor organized here tonight. Um, anything else? And All we right. should add that Fran is very helpful in saving the Harrison House on Broad Street. That is all I have, President Klein. Thank you, Councilmember Mitchell Brown. Councilmember Hardin. Thank you, President Klein. Uh, this evening I have. Um, Resolution 0015-2015, and I'd like to invite uh, Ms. Kimberly Blackwell to come forward. Uh, for those of you who don't know, uh, Ms. Kim Blackwell is an amazing woman, founder and CEO of PM PMM Agency. Simply put, Kim Blackwell is the national leader in the field of brand management. Unrivaled in her abilities, Kim was recognized by Ebony Magazine by being named to the 2015 Ebony Power 100 list. This is an international recognition that recognizes African Americans for their contributions to a variety of fields as varied as art, literature, journalism, academia, business, politics, religion, and many others. This, year, this year's list included Ohio's own John Legend, Kendrick Lamar, Prince, Larry Wilmore, Lupe Fiasco, Lester Holt, U.S. Attorney General Loretta Lynch, Drake, Janet Jackson, not, not our Janet Jackson, but the one <laughs> who's come in uh, to Nationwide Arena uh, this July, um, the Black Lives Matter social media movement, and a few others, and of course, uh, our own Kim Blackwell. Uh, this is one of the most prestigious lists that one could be named to, and I'm exceedingly proud that our own Kim Blackwell was uh, named to the list under the corporate crowns category for being one of the boldest, brightest corporate stars that moved the needle in 2015 as an African American. So as uh, chair of the Small Minority Business Committee, uh, Development Committee, and on behalf of uh, my colleagues on council and the citizens of Columbus, I want to say congrats to you, to my friend Kim Blackwell, um, and uh, 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 open it up. Uh, Ms. Would you like to make any comments? 
um, very briefly. I didn't come prepared for comments. I usually am given the talking points. So. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that said, uh, just very briefly, uh, thank you, thank you, and thank you. Um, it's always nice to be recognized, but it's something especially nice when it's by you know those who serve on a day to day. Um, and I want to uh, very much extend my thanks to you as council members and your commitment to small business enterprises. Hmm. And uh, just grateful to be here. Thank you. Uh, before I move for passages, do my, any of my colleagues have any additional comments? Councilmember Tyson. Thank you, Councilmember Hardin. Uh, I want to just say thank you to Kim. Um, certainly, she has, I know Councilmember Hardin just read just some of the accomplishments that Kimberly has made to our community. Um, but I just want to say that she is, um, she helps small organizations, large organizations. Kim has such a caring heart. Um, she certainly has been working with, I know we, we support the um, program through the Ohio Minority Development Supplier Council and Kim comes out and she teaches our businesses about marketing but whenever you call up on Kim I mean she's on the wise board she is always she's very committed to this community and very charitable she's a woman of faith and I just appreciate her being a role model for so many women and just has been amazing watching your business where it's first started to where it is today Thank and it's truly amazing and you're so deserving of this award that council member Harden has just stated that you've gotten from Ebony and you are just a deserving individual we thank, thank you, you for your, the work that you do not only in Columbus but across this country congratulations to you thank you very much real quickly and I promise I'll be brief I do have some staff members sure I refer to them as team members a few of them are with me I manage a team of consultants from across the country um, but you know it's a lot of times I get that recognition um, but they're doing the heavy lifting on the day to day and I never want them to think that they are not valued within the team uh, and they very much make me look really good so if they could, yeah. don't mind standing for those who were able to join today thank you very much that means a lot to me that you were here today thank you president pro tim any other questions or comments further comments with that I move for passage brown brown harden page stinziano tyson president klein Thank you very much. Thank you. Next, I have 21-0021-2016 uh, to express the city's support to the residents of Flint, Michigan during their ongoing water contamination crisis. Uh, Flint is the seventh largest city in Michigan with just shy of 100,000 residents. One third of its residents are under the age of 18. As I'm sure uh, many of you are aware, Flint's water supply has been um, uh, poisoned by, by le lead leaching into it. In December, the mayor of Flint and the governor of Michigan declared a public health state of emergency. My office spoke with the mayor's office and city council of Flint. Uh, and we're told that the water is still uh, not safe to drink for some residents and uh, that other residents are still not using the water to bathe uh, or for other normal processes, purposes. The World Health Organization has declared that there is no safe level of lead in a children's blood. Also noting that the, the lead effect, a child, that lead affects a child's brain development, resulting in lower IQ scores, reduced educational attainment, and myriad of other physical and neurological behavioral effects. Uh, so tonight I have uh, uh, the resolution. I don't usually read the uh, parts of the resolution, but I thought this was important um, because this is such a critical issue and the people of Columbus have a history and a custom of helping those in need wherever uh, they may be throughout the country or in the world. Um, I wanted to read this part. So now therefore, uh, it be resolved by the Council of the City of Columbus that the City of Columbus affirms its commitment to help as we are able for the residents of Flint, Michigan, affected by the leaching of lead into their water supply, and that all city departments, local private business, and charitable and nonprofit organizations are urged to work with governmental and non governmental organizations to provide material and non material assistance for the people of Flint for so long as that community is in need. Um, there are so many folks around the city and really around the country that are stepping up to help uh, the folks in Flint, Michigan. Um, 
I, um, before I call up uh, Misty Jordan with one, uh, Power 106, I wanted to open uh, up to my colleagues to see if they had any additional comments or questions. Councilmember Stenziano. Uh, thank you, Councilman uh, Hardin. Appreciate your leadership highlighting uh, Columbus's commitment to service. Uh, we have gotten a few calls in public utilities and just wanted to briefly uh, share that in talking with the uh, utilities director, Tracy Davies, uh, who's outlined to me the number of ways her staff is working 24 hours a day, seven days a week to make sure we have the safest drinking water possible in our own city. As many of you may know from the reports out of Flint, the situation there has been caused by pipes and deteriorating infrastructure that transports water to residents. Decades of testing has confirmed that here in Columbus, the water that leaves our plants is the highest quality possible and that we as a city are committed to improving the underground lines that take the water to our residents. Uh, one thing homeowners can do if they are concerned about the possibility of exposure to lead in, in uh, Columbus is to have a licensed plumber inspect the service lines to make sure lead is not entering the water. Uh, they can also get more information on lead in our drinking water by going to the Public Utilities website at columbus.gov forward slash public utilities or call the Water Quality Assurance Lab at 614-645-7314. Again, I appreciate your leadership. I know some people are concerned locally, uh, but really uh, all we can do as well for the residents and businesses of Flint, Michigan. So thank you. Thank you, Council Member Cinziano. I appreciate your leadership uh, in, in letting folks uh, uh, hear that information. Uh, Council Member, our President Pro Tem Tyson. Thank you, Councilman Hardin, and I appreciate the resolution that you're passing tonight and the comments you've made. I also appreciate the comments made by Councilman Stenziano, just, a bit, just continuing to verify to our residents in Columbus how safe our water is, and we are so appreciative of the Public Utilities Department ensuring that we can drink water, bathe in water, and um, have safe water. So I appreciate that you've given those comments. This really is a, a significant an issue um, in Flint. As you just stated, Councilman Hardin, that um, just thinking about education, and education is, is, is key to your economy growing. And so when you have individuals who have, um, who have lead poisoning, you know, it affects their brain, it affects their brain development, and it ultimately can affect you know, them in terms of their future, in terms of working in the community. And so have to think, ask the question, where, what, where, what will happen to these kids 25 years from now? Who's gonna be looking at the testing for these young individuals? It also um, bears the thought about our infrastructure. I mean, we just talked about the, the infrastructure we have in Columbus and the investment we've made in it, but we need to, you know, thinking about Flint, Michigan, about the infrastructure and what's gonna happen there. And we also know we have aging infrastructure across the country. That, is not that, that lead is not the issue, but in this issue, it really is a major, a significant issue. And then lastly, um, public safety. It affects public safety because we know that through um, FBI statistics that there's a national rate of violent crime today is roughly what it was in 1993, but you also realize that lead poisoning you think about brain development can be linked to public safety. So there are a lot of areas that this can have an impact on. And so um, we as a city, we as a country, really need to continue to pay, you know, to pay attention to what happens to the Flint community and really through, um, through hopefully our, our, our country and through prayer, we be able to hopefully help these individuals to move forward because it's gonna have significant significant implications on the individuals of that community. And I'm just so thankful that our community values every single person and makes sure that we have safe drinking water for our residents. So thank you for this resolution, Councilman Hardin. Thank you, President Pro Tem. I uh, want to say thank you to you. When we first started talking about this last week, you were in D.C. with a in, uh, leading conversation with the National uh, League of Cities, and uh, you were leading that conversation for folks uh, trying to do step up and do what they can to support this city uh, in their time of need. Any other comments? Uh, with that, I move for passage. Brown, Brown, Harden, Page, Stenziano, Tyson, President Klein. Thank you, and I'd like to call up Misty Jordan from Power 106 to talk about an effort that uh, the radio station that she's leading to get water to the folks in Flint, Michigan. Good evening. Uh, first, I'd first like to say thank you for providing me this platform to spread the word about Misty's water mission. There's a song that we sing as Buckeyes about we don't 
for lack of better words, we don't care about the whole state of Michigan. And um, I can stand here before you now and say from Ohio, that definitely is not the case. Um, I'm obsessed and my heart is broken over the coverage and the images that we're seeing uh, with the water crisis in Flint. And as many of us are aware here in Central Ohio, I think all of us across the nation are just kind of really glued to the coverage. So I decided to use my platform uh, with Magic 95.5 to uh, kind of help kick off Misty's Water Mission. So today was the beginning of Misty's Water Mission. I'm asking our listening audience to donate bottles of water, and I will collect water until Wednesday at 5 p.m. at our radio station. And then Thursday morning, I, along with my promotions department, will be headed to Flint, Michigan, we will distribute water personally to the residents of Flint. So I'm really excited about that because we know exactly where the water will be going. And uh, we will distribute at Triumph Center. Our goal at Radio One Cluster is to collect 100,000 bottles of water by Wednesday at 5 p.m. And uh, our cluster includes Power 1075, Joy 1071, Boom 1063, and then the station that I am on weekdays uh, from 10 to 3, which is Magic 95.5. So very excited about this uh, this afternoon. We received several phone calls from our listeners and them challenging each other, sororities, fraternities, uh, different organizations, and lots of water already coming in this afternoon. So we've got to find a place to put it. That's a good problem to have, and um, I'm excited. So our Radio 1 office is located 350 East 1st Avenue, Suite 100, and you can find more information on our website, which is mycolumbusmagic.com. Thank you all very much. I really appreciate it. Thank you so much for your leadership on this. Thank you, Councilman. Thank you. Is that it, Councilmember? Okay. Councilmember Page, Stenziano. Uh, thank you, uh, President Klein. Uh, this evening, I wanted to take a, a brief moment uh, to address an area of concern as the city has experienced three potentially preventable tragedies that concern fire safety. Uh, five people in three different incidents have died this past week in fires in Columbus, uh, four in Franklinton and one in Mifflin. I encourage those who are either watching at home or listening uh, to please make sure that you have properly installed smoke detectors and that any security measures that you have on your property do not interfere with the safe exit of your home in case of an emergency. I do want to commend the Columbus Fire Department for going door to door in the Franklinton community last week to install more than 100 smoke detectors for free to those that accepted. I encourage others to reach out to the Columbus Fire Department Smoke Alarm Hotline at 614-724-0935 for more information about free smoke detectors to make sure that you and your family are safe. Remember that if you rent, your landlord must supply the smoke detectors, but it's up to the residents to replace the batteries. Uh, with Columbus residents and the fire department continuing to work together, it's our hope that we can promote fire safety and prevent similar tragedies from happening. Thank you, President Klein. Thank you. President Pro Tem Tyson. Thank you, President. Klein, I have one resolution. It's resolution 0017X-2016. I'm going to ask Barbara Freeman to walk towards the podium. This resolution is to recognize January as Human Trafficking Awareness Month and to acknowledge Barbara Freeman for her advocacy to end human trafficking through, through empowerment and awareness. Whereas every year an increasing number of women, of people, fail to fall victim to human trafficking as it is one of the fastest growing illegal trades both around the world and in central Ohio. Whereas human trafficking is an estimated multi-billion dollar a year enterprise, an international enterprise in which 1,078 Ohio children become victims and over 3,000 more are at risk. Whereas victims of human trafficking need, to, need support in order to escape and recover from the physical, mental, emotional, and spiritual trauma associated with victimization. And whereas human traffickers use many physical and psychological techniques to control their victims, including the use of violence or threats of violence against a victim or the victim's family, isolation from the public, language and cultural barriers, threats of arrest, deportation, as well as other control tactics. And whereas Ohio has been dedicated to limit, has dedicated to eliminate human trafficking in 2014, Ohio rescued 181 victims and arrested 98 traffickers, but there is still more work to be done. 
whereas Barbara Freeman knows darkness, desperation, as well as being forced into sex trafficking during her teen years. Whereas Ms. Freeman emerged as one of the first graduates of the Ketch Court started by Judge Paul Herbert of the Franklin County Municipal Court and has since founded the Freeman Project, an initiative designed to help fight human trafficking and addiction. Whereas for her advocacy efforts, Ms. Freeman was honored by by the induction into the 29th YWCA Women of Achievement class, and whereas Ms. Freeman's efforts to promote human trafficking awareness in the city of Columbus represent her commitment to the eradication of human trafficking. Now, therefore, be it resolved by the Council of the City of Columbus that this council recognizes the importance of raising awareness of and the opposition to human trafficking and does hereby recognize the month of January as Human Trafficking Awareness Month. I move for passage. Brown, Brown, Hardin, Page, Denziano, Tyson, President Klein. Thank you. Ms. Freeman, the floor is yours. Thank you. Uh, first, I want to just thank you, Ms. Tyson, for um, inviting me this evening to bring the awareness and also just let the community know that as me being a survivor of human trafficking, um, being trafficked for 23 years, um, been out of it for seven years, completely changed my life, um, went on to work for the Alvis House as well as to be a leader in our community to change, to try to change um, this modem that has been going on. For the last four years, it has been my passion um, to go out and save women from the same thing that I have been saved from. So I just wanted to read a little bit about what the Freeman Project is and what the Freeman Project does. Um, the Barbara Freeman Project, I'm also the founder and the CEO of my um, nonprofit organization, which addressed the immediate needs of those women who have been trapped in the lifestyle of human trafficking, um, addiction of alcohol and drugs. The Freeman Project will provide immediate housing for those women who have successfully completed the recovery program. The Freeman Project is about those women who have been forced into sex trafficking and addicts to drug during their teen and adult years. I've spent 23 years in an abusive lifestyle of trafficking and addiction. For the past four years, my passion has been to break the cycle and assist other women for those possessive of change and driven by the successful transition. My motivation is to address this arising issue to center of my faith or trust in God, which is to contribute uh, my amazing life transition. The need for women completing treatment and transitioning into the safe house environment has been and therefore front of my mission. Um, I emerged as one of the first graduates, just as you said, at the Catch Court program. I'm the very first woman to have entered that program. And ever since then, I continue to walk through the doors every day, I mean, every Thursday, to show these women that it is possible to change their lives. Um, my mission is to reconnect um, isolated women um, and men to God and the community of support and providing human social services that addresses the short and long-term needs in the areas of homelessness, poverty, food, clothing, shelters, and human trafficking. My vision is to build a community of resilient people whose lives have been redeemed by God's grace, mercy, and love. Together, they will become self-sufficient through sustainable and gainful employment, housing, recovery process, rebuilding relationships with children and family membership, and healthy lifestyles. Just a few months ago, the Freeman Project was donated a six bedroom house to enable those women that I have rescued off of the streets. Once they've graduated the programs, they will come into the Freeman Project housing and they will live there for up to a year to regain um, custody of their children, re regain their lives, and also um, to, to become self-sufficient. Thank you. Thank you, Barbara, for coming down. I had the opportunity about a week ago to go to a program it's called Detour 2016. And during that presentation, um, it, was a, it was music, dance, and drama. And they really showed the effects of human trafficking. It was an amazing program. I think they'll have it again next year. I would certainly um, s state to my council members that it would be a great opportunity to go and just to be able to see human trafficking in a very different way. And just um, and there were a number of speakers there and c from the Columbus Police Department, in between the little vignettes, they had different speakers come up and talk that are involved in, hu that are involved in human trafficking awareness. And Detective Larry Wilson from the Columbus Police 
Police Department was there and he spoke, but also representatives from the Catch Court, from the Ohio Attorney General's Office, um, just lots of different people who are involved in making sure that women and, and women are not going to be human trafficked. So I thank you for what you're doing thank to you. help individuals to move forward in their lives. Uh, congratulations on your recovery thank you. and um, for 20 years to be human trafficked and to be standing here today and, and making change occur for other women is pretty, it's just, it is a blessing. And so thank you, thank you for being here. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Barbara. I have a few announcements, and um, the first one is um, just one week away is the enrollment period that's left for the ACA, which and for the mark for the health insurance marketplace, January 31st is the deadline. Also, tomorrow, Tuesday, January. 26 at 5 p.m. I will convene my committee hearing from finance, health, and human services and workforce development. So if, for my legislation that will appear on the council um, agenda for the next two weeks. And then also this Thursday, um, January 28th at 5 p.m., I will hold a meeting of the finance committee to allow public comment on the 2016 budget. And so if you're in the listening audience, please come down and if you have to make any comments, comments regarding the 2016 budget. Um, as with previously mentioned announcement, all interested citizens are invited to come down. You have three minutes to speak, and we look forward to hearing your comments on the 2016 budget. That's all I have. Thank you. Thank you, President Pro Tem Tyson. Are there any comments from our elected officials, Auditor Dorian, City Attorney Richard C. Pfeiffer, Jr.? I don't see anyone from the court administration or from the court. <clears throat> there any requests by members of council for removal of an ordinance resolution from the consent action portion of the agenda? Seeing none, may we have a motion to waive reading of the titles of 30-day legislation by the city clerk. Clerk, call the roll. Brown, Brown, Hardin, Page, Stinziano, Tyson, President Klein. Thank you. Will the clerk now read the ordinance numbers of 30-day legislation for tonight's, uh, on tonight's agenda for first reading. Finance Committee Ordinances 51 and 116-2016, Public Safety Committee Ordinance 105-2016, Public Service and Transportation Committee Ordinance 127-2016, Public Utilities Committee Ordinances 2885, 3079, 3173, 3183, 3198, 3202, 3204, 3206-2015, and Ordinances 3, 11, 12, 13, 14, 17, 20, 25, 42, and 80 dash 2016. Thank you. The following ordinances appear on our agenda as consent actions, and will the clerk now read the ordinance numbers of each into the record? Resolutions of Expression 19X-2016, Finance Committee. Resolution 7X-2016, Health and Human Services Committee. Ordinances 40, 41, 57, 62, and 167 2016. Economic Development Committee, Ordinance 171-2016, Public Safety Committee, Ordinance 95-2016, Public Service and Transportation Committee, Ordinance 3209-2015, and Ordinances 48, 53, 55, 56, 61, 63, 88, and 165-2016. Recreation and Parks Committee, Ordinance 3145-2015 and 126-2016. Housing Committee, Ordinances 7, 8, 90, 91, 92, 93, 152, 153, 154, and 155 2016. Public Utilities Committee Ordinances 2956, 2975, 3059, 3071, 3101, 3138, 3174, 3175 2015, and 18 2016. Judiciary and Court Administration Committee Ordinances 6970, 71 2016. Thank you, Clerk. We do have one speaker on the non-agenda action portion of the agenda. That's Mr. Nathaniel Wilkins. Mr. Wilkins, welcome back to Council. Looks like you're speaking on 8-2016. Uh, you have three minutes. If you could identify yourself for the record, the floor is yours. 
1612 Arlington Avenue, Mr. Lathan George Wilkins, the chairman of Solely Vacant and Abandonment Property, North London area. Um, I'll be bringing to your attention tonight 008 2016 for, 15, for 1585 Myrtle Avenue. Um, first of all, I'd just like to say three things about this particular property. This particular property has sit vacant for a long time, but Again, I would like to know what it's going to be used for. I know you got it in your notes for a care of an emergency. What I don't want to see is not a rental property, but this particular property would have to be done for a better use of it. But I would like to know what it's going to be used for. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Mr. Wilkins. Director Shoney, do you have any comments? Uh, thank you, President Klein, members of Council. This property will uh, be used for rental. Of the 10 properties we have on the agenda this evening, um, six out of the 10 will be used for rental, three will be rehab for home ownership, and one is a duplex that half will be um, used for ownership, and then um, the other half will be rented out. Okay. Any questions or comments from Mr. Shoney? Seeing none, I'd like to have a motion to approve all of these designated items as consent actions by voice vote. Is there a second? Clerk, call the roll vote, please. Ms. Brown? Yes. Mr. Brown? Yes. Hardin? Yes. Page? Yes. Stenziano? Yes. Tyson? Yes, with the exception of 0040-2016, for which I am abstaining. President Klein? Yes. Consent agenda passes. We'll now proceed with the second reading of 30-day tabled and emergency legislation. The first committee is the Health and Human Services Committee. President Pro Tim Tyson chairs that committee. Councilmember Tyson, the floor is yours. Thank you. The first ordinance I have is ordinance number 0015-2016. It's to authorize and direct the Board of Health to enter into a contract with The Ohio State University College of Nursing to provide training and certification to community health workers for the Celebrate One Community Connector course project and to authorize an expenditure of $69,000 from the city's private grants fund and to declare an emergency. So this is an exciting program, and this program um, will, first of all, think about Ohio State. And Ohio State will be providing 12 to 14 weeks of paid training um, with, for our community health worker certification program. There'll be a part-time part paid internship, which will be ending December 31st of 2016. And it will be a support for long-term employment in the health-related fields through workforce development and continuing education. This program is going to kick off February the 24th. They are, we will have 24 community connectors. We've had 100 individuals apply to be a community connector. Now, these community connectors are going to be working in eight priority neighborhoods. Linden, the near south side, the near east side, Hilltop, Franklinton, Northeast, Southeast, and, North, and the Northern area. And their goal really is to work with the residents in those communities to ensure that um, in regards to infant mortality, that we will be able to have these individuals working with uh, individuals in those communities in order to reduce infant mortality. To be able to have these individuals will be connecting the residents with the services in our community that will help those residents to get all the services they need, again, with the, with the ultimate goal is to reduce infant mortality. So this is an exciting program, great partnership with The Ohio State University School of Nursing, and we just really do look forward to um, all the positives that will come from this program. Dr. Long, do you want to add any additional comments? Uh, council uh, Chair Tyson and members of council, we are very excited about this initiative. Um, it clearly is working in the neighborhoods. We will all of the funds will actually go for the whole project uh, to community organizations who will actually be hiring the 24 outreach workers and then obviously these funds will go to the College of Nursing where their um, community health worker certification um, will be, um, they'll be educated and then hopefully receive that certification. So this is both a workforce development, a resident to resident education project, so we're very excited about this. Thank you. Any questions or comments from my colleagues? I move for passage. Clerk, call the roll. Brown, Brown, Hardin, Page, Cinziano, Tyson, Cl President Klein. Legislation passed. Oh. 
Thank you. The next ordinance is 0037-2016. It's to authorize the appropriation of $500,000 from the unappropriate balance of the general government grants fund to Columbus Public Health for the 2016 HOPE program and to declare an emergency. The HOPE program provides for the implementation of long-term comprehensive strategies for meeting the need, housing needs of low-income persons with HIV and AIDS and their families. And the eligible activities include providing housing information services, resource identification, acquisition, rehabilitation, conversion, lease, and repair of facilities to provide housing and services to um, housing units, project or tenant-based rental assistance, short-term rent, mortgage and utility payments. In 2015, the HOPRA provided long-term rental housing and utility assistance to about 100 HIV-positive people within um, our community and, a, and an additional community outside of Columbus. In addition, HOPRA provided short-term rental assistance to approximately three households. This is really important for individuals who have, who have HIV or an AIDS, and so I'm hopeful that my council colleagues would be in support of this uh, appropriation. So I'll move for passage. Clerk, call the roll. Sorry. Brown, 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 Hardin, Page, Cinziano, Tyson, President Klein. Thank you. And the last ordinance is 0054-2016. It's to make the appropriation for the 12 months ending December 31st of 2016 for the Health Department's Grants Fund to the Department of Health in various projects and object classes for the continued operations of grant programs and to authorize the Board of Health to accept 11 grant awards and to declare an emergency. And the amount for these awards, the appropriation would be four million six hundred and forty two thousand three hundred twenty seven dollars and ninety five cents and um, some of the legislation was around for minority health the dental sealant program the alcohol immigration women's support program alcohol and adult prevention program so there are a number of programs you'll be hearing more legis legislation will pass on each of these but i just want to bring this to my council members attention i move for passage Clerk, call the roll. Brown, Brown, Hardin, Page, Cinziano, Tyson, President Klein. Legislation passed. Thank you. That's all I have on legislation. And I didn't mention one other um, um, comment during my um, announcements. I just want to, um, again, I want to recognize the life of Mr. Dennison Ward, Denny Griffith, to extend our sincerest condolences to his family and, the, and friends on the occasion of his passing. And Denny really did um, his work at the, at the Columbus College of Art and Design is just pretty, um, was just amazing how he transformed the, the College of Art and Design um, with so many new and innovative programs and just really appreciate his life work that was dedicated to the arts and um, and making this a great city for the arts and just our, our hearts and our hearts and thoughts go out to his family. Thank you. Well said. Thank you, President Pro Tim Tyson. Is that all? All right. Our next committee is the Economic Development Committee. Council Member Elizabeth Brown chairs that committee. Council Member Brown, the floor is yours. Thank you, President Klein. Um, tonight in Economic Development Committee, we have Ordinance Number 169-2016. Uh, to authorize an appropriation of $8,456,268 in various divisions of the Community Development Block Grant Fund to provide funding for approved programs uh, and to declare an emergency. If there are no questions, I move for passage. There's a second by President Pro Tim Tyson. Clerk, call the roll. Brown, Brown, Hardin, Page, Cinziano, Tyson, President Klein. Legislation passed. Thank you. Um, I also have legislation in the Administration Committee. With your permission, I'd like Please. to proceed. Thank you. Tonight in Administration Committee, we have Ordinance Number 134-2016 to accept mem uh, mem Memorandum of Understanding Number 2015-01 executed between representatives of the Communications Workers of America, CWA Local 4502, which amends the collective bargaining agreement April 24, 2014 through April 23, 2017, and to declare an emergency. Are there any questions for my colleagues? Seeing none, I move for passage. Clerk, call the roll. Brown, Brown, Hardin, Page, Cinziano, Tyson, President Klein. Legislation passed. 
Thank you, President Klein. That's all I have in my committees this evening. Thank you, Council Member. The next committee is the Public Service and Transportation Committee. Council Member Hardin chairs that committee. Council Member Hardin, the floor is yours. Thank you, President Klein. Tonight in Public Service and Transportation Committee, we have uh, Ordinance 0052-2016 to authorize the Director of Public Service to pay the city's annual membership dues to the Mid-Ohio Regional Planning Commission for the Department of Public Service, Division of Design and Construction, to authorize the expenditure of $425,834.24 from the Streets Construction, Maintenance, and Repair Fund and to declare an emergency. This ordinance is a payment for the City of Columbus's annual membership dues to MORPSI. Many of you know MORPSI as a voluntary association of central Ohio governments and regional organizations that enable all of our communities to look at uh, transportation, energy, housing, land use, the environment, uh, and economic prosperity from new, innovative, and comprehensive perspectives. Uh, with over 60 members, Morpsey serves Ohio's fastest growing city by connecting us to our neighbors, providing us with crucial data and research, and ensuring that policymakers are well informed. Uh, if there are no questions or comments, I move for passage. Clerk Calder. Brown, Brown, Hardin Page, Cinziano Tyson, President Klein. Thank you. Uh, and lastly, we have 0059-2016 uh, to amend the 2015 capital improvement budget to appropriate funds within the street and highway improvement fund to authorize and direct the city auditor to transfer cash and appropriation within the streets and highway improvement fund to waive the competitive bidding requirements of city Colum uh, Columbus city code to authorize the director of public service to enter into contract with GSMPOH Inc. for Environmental and Management Systems uh, support and support in the EMS cert certification process for the Department of Public Service and to expend up to $330,000 to pay for the contract and to declare an emergency. Uh, this ordinance uh, is before us because it uh, weighs competitive bidding clause of the city code. And so I'd ask Director Gallagher to uh, just please speak to why that is necessary. Yes. President Klein, Council Chair Hardin, and other members of Council, the reason that we decided to waive bid on this is GSMP recently completed an environmental audit for fleet management. And while they were doing that, they were on some of the property of public service. And so since they were already out there, They've already know our processes and procedures based on what they did for fleet management. We chose to go ahead and um, move forward with um, GSNP so we could save uh, taxpayers dollars and time. Thank you. Thank you, Director. Uh, are there any questions or comments from my colleagues? Hearing none, I move for passage. Clerk, call the roll. Brown, Brown, Hardin, Page, Cinziano, Tyson, President Klein. Legislation passed. Uh, that's all with public service and transportation this evening. Thank you, Councilmember Hardin. The next committee on the agenda is the Recreation and Parks Committee. Councilmember Page chairs that committee. Councilmember, the floor is yours. Thank you, President Klein. Tonight in Recreation and Parks, we have two companion pieces, both dealing with golf course equipment and getting ready for to open them up in the springtime. We have Ordinance 2993-2015 to authorize the Director of Finance and Management to enter into contract with Century Equipment to authorize the city auditor to appropriate, transfer, and expend $49,517.16 from the Recreation and Parks Voted Bond Fund and Permanent Improvement Fund to amend the 2015 Capital Improvements Budget to waive the competitive bidding provisions of the Columbus City Code and to declare an emergency. Director Collins, could you speak briefly on why we are waiving the competitive provisions of the Columbus City Code? Councilmember Page, President Klein, members of council, thank you. This is, uh, both of these pieces are pieces that we're replacing with the same type of equipment. So in other words, they're both, the uh, Toro Sidewinder is being replaced with the Toro Sidewinder mower, and then the Toro Sprayer is being replaced with the Toro Sprayer. So obviously we've had great experience with this equipment. It's made specifically to handle the terrain at Turnberry Golf Course, and so we're looking to replace it for the similar equipment. Thank you, Director. Are there any questions or comments? Seeing none, I move for passage. Clerk, call the roll. Brown, Brown, Hardin, Page, Stinziano, Tyson, President Klein. Passed. And thank you, Director, for addressing um, the, why we're waiving competitive bidding on both provisions. We now have Ordinance 2999-2015 to authorize the Director of Finance and Management to enter into a contract with Century Equipment to authorize the expenditure of $30,596.46 
from recreation and parks voted bond funds to waive the competitive bidding provisions of the Columbus City Code and to declare an emergency. If there are no questions or comments, I move for passage. Clerk, call the roll. Brown, Brown, Hardin, Page, Cinziano, Tyson, President Klein. Passed. Thank you, President Ginther. That's all we have in recreation and parks. Thank you, Councilmember Page. Uh, the next committee is the Public Utilities Committee. It's okay, Councilmember Page. Thank you, President Klein. Uh, tonight in Public Utilities Committee, we have Ordinance 3770-2015, uh, which to authorize the Director of Finance and Management to establish blanket purchase orders for the purchase of sewer treatment chemicals for the Department of Public Utilities, Division of Sewerage and Drainage, and to authorize the expenditure of $2,140,000 from the Sewerage Operating Fund to establish an auditor certificate in the amount of $2,140,000 for the expenditures listed within this legislation and declare an emergency. Uh, for fellow council members, you know, chemicals are an important part of the sewer treatment process uh, and it's being submitted as an emergency to ensure there's no interruptions in the timely delivery of those chemicals uh, used in the treatment process. If there are no questions, I move for passage. Second. Clerk called the roll. Brown, Brown, Hardin, Page, Cinciano, Tyson, President Klein. Passed. Uh, thank you, President Klein. Uh, next, we have Ordinance 3771-2015 to authorize the Director of Finance and Management to establish blanket purchase orders for the purchase of water treatment chemicals for the Department of Public Utilities, Division of Water, to authorize the expenditure of $17,500,000 from the wa Water Operating Fund to establish an auditor certificate in the amount of $17,500,000 for the expenditures listed within this legislation and declare an emergency. Uh, similar to the previous ordinance, uh, this is again intended to make sure there's no interruption to the timely delivery of chemicals, uh, in this case for water treatment process, particularly to address taste and odor uh, events. If there are no questions, I move for passage. Second. Clerk, call the roll. Brown, Brown, Hardin, Page, Cinziano, Tyson, President Klein. Uh, thank you, President Klein. That's all we have in public utilities and my other committees. Thank you, Chairman Cinziano. The final committee tonight before we recess for zoning is the Rules and Reference Committee. I chair that committee. Uh, we have a piece 249 2016 to repeal and replace various sections of Chapter 585, 588, 590 of the Columbus City Code repaying the regulation of peer to peer transportation network companies and to repeal and replace Ordinance Number 3009 2015 and declare an emergency. Uh, this legislation is the exact same legislation we passed last week. However, we were a council member down in order to, to pass an emergency. Now that uh, we are fully staffed as a council, uh, I'd like to reconsider this um, because of the, the, <clears throat> the uh, time lag in between when this legislation that we've recently passed two weeks ago would take place compared to the state legislation. It would require uh, individual drivers, uh, thousands of whom, would have to pay $35 to the city knowing that ultimately the PUCO and the City of Columbus would be allowing the uh, transportation network companies themselves to be regulated, uh, where drivers would not have to pay a fee, uh, that the regulation simply would be for the transportation network companies, thereby allowing each individual driver uh, sparing them the $35. Uh, so now that we're fully staffed as a council, I'd like to move for passage by voice vote. Clerk, call the roll by voice. Brown? Yes. Mr. Brown? Yes. Hardin? Yes. Page? Stinziano? Yes. Tyson? Yes. President Klein? Yes. Legislation passed. So it looks like we're done through the formal action before we get to zoning. We have several non-agenda speakers. So if we have no other business, I'd like to get a motion to adjourn. Uh, this meeting will reconvene for zoning at 6.30 and we'll have non-agenda non speakers shortly. Is there a motion to adjourn? Clerk, call the roll. Brown, Brown, Hardin, Page, Cinziano, Tyson, President Klein. We are adjourned and we'll take non-agenda speakers in probably the next five minutes. Regular meeting number five will now come to order. Can I get a motion to dispense with the reading of the journal? Is there a second? Clerk, call the roll. Brown, Brown, Hardin, Page, Cinziano, Tyson, President Klein. Are there any communications and reports received by the city clerk? No, there are not. Are there any first readings of 30-day legislation? No, there are not. We'll now go to the zoning committee. Councilmember Page chairs that committee. All members serve on the committee. Councilmember Page, the floor is yours. Thank you, President Klein. It's my understanding that we do not have any speaker slips this evening, and we will go ahead to our first variance. 0046-2016, 
to grant a variance from the provisions of sections 3332, section 39R4, residential district use, 3312, uh, 25 maneuvering, 3312 section 49, <laughs> minimum numbers of parking spaces required, 3332 section 05, area district lot width requirements, 3332 section 15, R4, area district requirements, 3332 section 19, fronting, 3332 section 21D, building lines, 3332 section 26 minimum side yard permitted and 3332 section 27 rear yard of the city of Columbus codes for the property located at 1087 Say Avenue 43201 to permit a single unit dwelling a carriage house in the rear yard of a lot developed with a single unit dwelling with reduced development standards in the R4 residential district. The applicant is Audra and Lacey Wooler of 1087 Say Avenue, Columbus, Ohio, 43201. The proposed use is two single unit dwellings on one lot. The city department's recommendation is approval. The Italian Village Commission recommended approval. I would like to first move to waive second reading. Move. Second. Brown, Brown, Harden, Page, Cinziano, Tyson, President Klein. I now move for passage. Brown, Brown, Harden, Page, Cinziano, Tyson, President Klein. We have variance 0072-2016. To grant a variance from the provisions of sections 3356, section 03, C4 permitted uses, and 3356, section 11A2, C4 district setback lines of the Columbus City Codes for the property located at 171 East Livingston Avenue, 43215, to permit first floor residential use with a reduced building line in the C4 commercial district. The applicant is KV Development LLC and care of Vincenzo Fresola, architect 207 16th Street, um, Suite 403, Ashland, Kentucky 41101. The proposed use is first floor residential use. The city department's recommendation is approval. German Village Commission recommended approval. I would now like to move to waive second reading. Brown, Brown, Harden, Page, Cinziano, Tyson, President Klein. I now move for passage. Second. Brown, Brown, Harden, Page, Cinziano, Tyson, President Klein. Variant 0073-2016 to rezone 1590 McNaughton Road 43232 being 8.66 acres located at the east side of McNaughton Road, 1,200 feet north of Livingston Avenue from R1 Residential District to LAR12 Limited Apartment Residential District. The applicant is Homeport, care of Dave Perry, David Perry Company Incorporated, 145 East Rich Street, third floor, Columbus, Ohio, 43215. The proposed use is a multi-unit residential development. The city department's recommendation is approval. The Far East Area Commission recommended approval. And I would like to first move to waive second reading. Brown, Brown, Harden, Page, Cinziano, Tyson, President Klein. I now move to table this variance indefinitely. Brown, Brown, Harden, Page, Cinziano, Tyson, President Klein. Variant 0128-2016 to rezone 1045 Leona Avenue, 43201, being 0.18 acres located at the southeast corner of Leona Avenue and Roselle Avenue from M Manufacturing District to R4 Residential District. The applicant is Brad E. Halley, 640 Bear Run Lane, Lewis Center, Ohio, 43035. The proposed use is a three-unit, two-four dwelling. The city department's recommendation is approval. Milo Grogan Area Commission recommended approval. I would like to first move to waive second reading. Brown, Brown, Harden, Page, Cinziano, Tyson, President Klein. I now move to amend as submitted to the clerk. Brown, Brown, Harden, Page, Cinziano, Tyson, President Klein. And I now move for passage. Brown, Brown, Harden, Page, Cinziano, Tyson, President Klein. And our final variance for this evening, 0129-2016. To grant a variance from the provisions of sections 3312, section 29, parking space, 3321, section 05B2, vision clearance, section 3332, 
uh, 0.05 area district lot width requirements and section 3332 section 28 side or rear yard obstruction of the Columbus City Codes. For the property located at 1045 Leona Avenue 43201 to permit a three unit dwelling with reduced development standards for a three unit dwelling in the R4 residential district. The applicant is Brad E. Haley, 640 Bear One Lane, Lewis Center, Ohio, 43035. The proposed use is a three-unit, two-floor dwelling that will be in compliance with zoning standards. The City Department's recommendation is approval. Milo Grogan Area Commission recommended approval. I would like to first move to waive the second reading. Brown, Brown, Harden, Page, Cinziano, Tyson, President Klein. And I now move for passage. Brown, Brown, Harden, Page, Cinziano, Tyson, President Klein. Thank you, President Klein. We have nothing further in zoning this evening. Any other business to come before council? Seeing none, I get a motion to adjourn special or regular meeting number five. Is there a second? Clerk, call the roll. Brown, Brown, Harden, Page, Cinziano, Tyson, President Klein. Adjourned. <laughs>